Hi, everybody. This is George Levy from the Future of Bitcoin, and I'm here for the Blockchain Institute of Technology. I have the pleasure to be here with Juan Garabaglia from Bitprim, who is one of the speakers featured here at the Future of Bitcoin. Juan, thank you very much for being here. Thank you. I actually, uh, I paid attention to your session. I was very, very glued about the fact of your vision for Bitprim is to, I guess it's to lower the bar to bring in more developers into the Bitcoin world. It seems that there is just not enough developers in Bitcoin. I'm, I want to hear more about that. Well, we we have developers and we have a lot of very smart people involved for a decent amount of time. But really, our mission is very, very big and it's a huge challenge to replace it. To, to, to create an, an alternative monetary system that will become one, we, we expect to be one main actor in the, in the financial system. So in order to to, <clears throat> to achieve that, that goals, we need much, much more developers and developers for blockchain and Bitcoin takes time to get the skills required to, to participate actively in the, in the, in the coding process. Uh, so as easier is the is the platform and the and the the code they need to do is is faster the the learning curve so also it's more attractive for people because in with they they can do more in less time uh so it's not the problem that we there we don't have developers uh that the problem is we need many many more because the industry is very hot okay and one of the things that and and i I know that you actually even actually had that little video clip with Steve Ballmer with the developers, <laughs> developers, developers. It's almost like a battle cry. And the way that you positioned it, which I, I can totally see the angle, is the fact that the survival of Bitcoin, to be able to compete in this environment where like you're competing against the financial institutions, for Bitcoin to be able to play at the level it needs to be, you need to have a lot of developers. And right now, there's just simply not enough of a pool. Yes. Um, I really got that, especially because what I loved about the Bitprim vision is that it actually is available across multiple different programming languages. Like it's available in Python. What else is available? Python, Node, Go, C, C++, and we are probably going to add a few more. And also we are setting the foundation to, to create more and more, more implementations for other languages. Uh, and it's one of the ways we are trying to address the, the, the demand of the market. We, we need more developers. so. Uh, we we can't just restrict to developers in C++. We need to involve as much as we can. So we're trying to adapt for to to the market in order to get more people able to to start learning Bitcoin and, and blockchain. The um, the thing that I found very interesting was you mentioned that the the Bitprim platform is modular, and and I found that very interesting because it's not like basically you have one simple platform. So you've got this easy to use platform that you're walking in. But it's even broken down into individual modules for different needs. Can you tell me more about that? Yes, yes. Originally, the the, the Bitcoin uh, has only one implementation, mm -hmm. which is the Satoshi client, and the Satoshi client is not modularized at all. It's like what we call a, a, a spaghetti, where it's extremely complex to to understand, and it's extremely fragile. So when you try to modify one part it can break in other parts so it's a time consuming process extremely frustrating extremely complex to learn so the first step is to do a modular this architecture in order to have the information organized and and isolated models for specific tasks so if you are modifying some part of the networking you are not destroying the database or vice versa so basically now is much much organized and and and, and it's human readable basically what I liked also about the way you described it, and actually this ties into this whole vision of having multiple implementations yep. of the Bitcoin protocol. And you talked about the Satoshi client. So tell me a little bit more. So the Satoshi client actually has the lion's share. Like it's got like 80% and there's basically no competition and there's a requirement to have these multiple implementations. implementations. Yes, yes. Uh, any, any protocol that succeeds in, in, in internet or in communications, BGP, HTTP, IMAP, SMTP, SSH, all of them has multiple implementations. If you don't have multiple implementations, the protocol will never take never take off. So that's one reason that it's pretty obvious. It's a, it's a market rule. It happens all the time that there's no reason to, con to think that it will not happen this time. Uh, but 
also uh, there are already implementations we have one and there are others other options in the market most of them very very interesting but there is a there is a there, actually the, not all the users knows about the new implementations mm -hmm. because there's a network effect and and will take time until they they the implementations get more more usable more mature and start um, to be a real option for for users so but it's a, it's a, it's a process that uh, is not a problem because it already started and is is aligned with all the predictions we had that the market will have multiple implementations and that is required for bitcoin that is in process and there are several groups working and competing and collaborating together in order to, to improve and doing continuous continuous development that will give us what will be the future of bitcoin you will see for sure i have no doubts multiple implementations coexisting in the same network in the in, in few months so the numbers you see today uh, reflect the situation of the, the the picture today but the the market trend is, is clear we are getting ma more and more implementations and the market will be much will have a much better distribution and that makes sense that it's a moment in time right now yeah. especially because right now we're at the future of bitcoin yeah and i saw your session you were actually there with two of your developers yes. i saw a demo of the platform it actually worked beautifully mm -hmm. that was really good um i loved the fact of the emphasis on the fact that the platform can be used in a lot of different languages like you had mentioned that it could be used in python it can be used in c plus plus and and i really enjoyed that um so let me ask you a quick question you came to the future of bitcoin um and you actually spread your message so now yes. i'm here talking about bitprim and we're sharing bitprim with the blockchain institute of technology audience um how can people find out more about bitprim well they can reach us at our web page bitprim.org or using the slack channel bitprim.slack.com or any other communication way excellent is there anything else that you'd like to share from the bitprim vision with the audience right now La any last thoughts you want to share well i i wish to say that uh, we are in a in in, a, in period that we are solving many different things uh but the the technology is here to stay and and really we are going to see a lot of development of bitcoin in the near future in order to get expansion adoption massively into you everyday users life and you, users when they start using bitcoin they never stop it's very very addictive so mm -hmm. it's it's just the, the, it's just we need to create and develop the the new layers that that connects bitcoins with everyday life fantastic thank you very much Juan. i really appreciate having you in the audience and thank you, everybody. This is George Levy for Blockchain Institute of Technology. We're changing the world one blockchain at a time.